I'm Anna Viriel, and we are here with The Doctor Weighs In, and we have Oscar Smith here to promote his new book, Natural Strength, and learn more about fitness motivation uh, and how to be kind of your best self. Hi, Oscar. Hi, how are you? Thank Good. you for having me on your show. It's a pleasure. Yes, thank you for joining us. So before we talk about your book and all of everything that you're doing, let's talk a little bit about your background because I'm fascinated. I had an opportunity to look at some of your pictures at your YouTube channel. Uh, so you do a lot and it seems like you've also worked with a lot of really cool people, whether they're celebrities. Um, I saw you worked with Tom Brady, which of course everybody here in the Boston area is probably excited to hear more. Um, so just tell me about your background and what brought you to this point. I was always athletic when I was a kid in school. Uh, and then as I went into high school and then in college, athletics just followed with me. And I was very fascinated about human movement. And you being a doctor, you know, the way the body moves, the way it works was quite fascinating to me. So I was like, how can I put physical activity with that little bit of knowledge? And I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to become a trainer. And I just kind of put that all together. And 30 years later, here I am. <laughs> Okay, and you've done you've done a lot though. Instead of um, kind of just here you are, a little bit of background. You own your own gym in New York City. Right, right. And I am curious, how is that all going? What do you think? I'm kind of under the impression it's a little bit more of a private gym. Is that correct? Or it more is of my one gym. On one? Yeah, correct. My gym is just one on one. It only goes by referrals. <laughs> okay. Um, most of the people that do come to me are either the mom next door or, you know, celebrities or actors, pro athletes, you know, musicians, things like that, because they uh, they pride themselves in their privacy. And it all started back in 2003 when I first opened up in Tribeca. Uh, one of the Victoria's Secret models lived across the street from when I opened the gym. And I remember standing outside, it was Ann V, and she said, oh, what is this? I'm like, oh, I just opened a private gym. She's like, great, because I get sick of guys hitting on me all the time at the gym or taking pictures of me when I'm like on all four, things like that. So. Right away, after her experiencing it, she just spread the word like wildfire. And then it went around in the neighborhood, and then it went to agents, and then uh, athletes and their agents and things. It just grew from there. So I was very blessed at the right time, right moment, and just kept doing what I do best. And so have you been able to continue operations, given it's a one-on-one -on -one during all of the COVID, or have you had to shut down? I actually shut down uh, for two reasons. One, all my clients flew out to their houses in the Hamptons or went abroad. The models and stuff like that, everyone else had to go back basically home. But also it was a little bit of understanding, you know, none of us are medical professionals, so only so much cleaning you can do to make sure everyone stays safe so everyone gets a kind of an idea of what's, what is it exactly that's going around. So it just basically went from there. So like, okay, and then clients slowly started coming back, I would say, later on, um, I would say May, mid-May, you started to come back and stuff like that. Majority of them aren't going to come back until basically September, you know, but in the meantime, it's like, okay, I'm just follow the rules and, you know, take it day by day. Yeah, kind of like what everybody's had to do, I suppose. But you have some at-home workouts. Do you have anything like fun tips um, that might oh, yeah. break some of I uh, totally have a couple of few tips. Let's design it just for you. All right, you do your three to five miles. Let's say you do three miles. After those three miles, you're going to drop down and do 25 push-ups, 25 dips, 25 sit-ups, 25 leg lifts. Run the next two miles. When you're done running the next two miles, you're going to go back now to the back of a park bench, 25 incline push-ups. Feet on top of the bench, 25 decline push-ups. Maybe a plank hold for one minute. Come up, 30 seconds jumping jacks, then box jumps, or basically jumping up onto the bench, back down, 30 count. There you go. Simple for you to add. Perfect. You can do a lot of things without weights, which are great. And especially now it's summer, and you're located up in Boston, it's good to get outside. Outside helps motivate people a lot more. And I tell them, when you go to the beach, you know, you can go for a soft sand run, do a mile, swim from lifeguard chair to lifeguard chair. Please make sure you stay safe, go along parallel to the shore. You can do a few things at the beach. And I tell everyone, get up early, get started early. And once you start that, keep consistency in your routine. That's the big thing. And motivation. Motivation is a big thing. I know it's hard. It's raining, whatever. It's cold. Roll out of bed and just get going. Just get started. Even if you just step outside and let me walk around a block. 
You know, like I said, you run, even if you walk three miles. I, I have this great saying I tell everyone, if you run five miles or walk five miles, it's still five miles you did. So regardless, yeah. and that's, a, that's the start. So I put physical health with mental health as well. So without, I tell everyone, try and go without a playlist, without music. This way allows you to logically just put things in order, allow you to think and sort some things out, get some stuff out of your head, you know, just focus in on you, which is really important. That's a big mental issue with a lot of us because we're very hard on ourselves and you feel bad when you do eat bad or you had a bad workout. It kind of affects you along the way. And that's when you start to go down that like, oh, I'm just, I'm, you know what? I'm just going to quit. Forget it. I don't feel like doing it anymore. Or I put in the extra couple of pounds. It's never going to come off. You know, it's the work involved. And you, it's having that person to push you as a trainer or a health professional to say, hey, I need a little bit of extra help. I can't do it myself. And there's nothing wrong with seeking that out and say, I need a little help. Like I wasn't such a great swimmer. I was swimming with some of the best guys from, you know, University of Hawaii, Florida, my, you know, everything else like that. And they, they pushed me to swim. Same when it came to running. Like, oh, my God, these guys are doing seven-minute miles and keeping it going. I'm like, oh. And that's something, push yourself a little bit more. And if you can get a workout buddy or a group or an activity together, that's fantastic. And you've been in the fitness industry for 30 years now. Have you ever had a time where it's just like you lacked the motivation? Or have you always just lived by the motto – body in motion stays in motion so just always get up and go out and do something no you do I, I fell into a rut here and there you know you have like a lot of outside factors breakups of girlfriends and most i mean a lot of things affect that with you mentally but i have a saying motivation comes from bed i say that every morning to everyone and my other saying is once you start like you said the law of inertia body in motion stays in motion as it you know goes so once you stay consistent with it, you feel better. Remember, endorphins, adrenaline kicks into your body. You feel a little bit better. You start, you know, like, hey, you know what? I'm going to put on a suit and tie today to go food shopping just because I feel better about myself. Or, you know what? I'm going to put on my skinny jeans, you know, to go out. Because setting a goal for yourself is very important and maintaining and keeping or reaching that goal. Most people, when you have a defeatist attitude, or you start to become negative and surround yourself with negative people, that's the worst thing you can do because then it just drags you down. I tell everyone, it's like swimming in the ocean with an anchor tied to your feet. You're not going anywhere. And so that's Have the first thing you had a client that needed, um, that didn't want to show up for a workout and you had to text them something motivating to get them there? Has that ever happened? Oh, oh no. They, they know I will get in a cab or jump on my bike and go to their house. Okay. I've done that before quite a bit. And people are like, oh, no. And they know I'm going to punish them when they miss a workout. Okay. So that. And so I tell them. a workout buddy like you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no. And I tell everyone, I can definitely make you throw up, pass out, whatever. I don't want you to do that. I want you to feel good about exercise. Through all my years of hundreds of people, whatever I train, I know I can't train the world, but. That's why I wrote the book, was that I want you to understand and adapt my philosophy or just something to get you up to get you started. That was the goal of the book. And years of workouts and different types of people, and I put in the book different workouts and diet tips because diets are another thing. People do a diet for a week, oh, this isn't working, and then go to another one. As I say, the yo-yo diet or two weeks. Certain diets don't work for you that work for other people. As individuals, that's the same thing with workouts. Certain workouts don't work for you as it works for other people. And it's up to you finding that thing that works for you specifically that you feel good about. And I, I remember I put that in a book. Exercise is anything. Washing your car, walking your dogs. If I can get you to go out and gardening, anything, that counts as ex housework, as exercise which is a good feeling inside. It just You feel better when you just start to move around. Yeah, I'm going to do a review copy of your book, so they're sending it to me, so I haven't read it yet. Um, oh, no, that's me sending it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the, you're sending it to me. But I do want to know, so one of the things, you know, obviously I read the review on it in terms of, like, what it was about, and one of the things I do want to touch on is housework, gardening, actually being a form of working out. And I feel like back in the olden days, people didn't always just do the gym. They did gardening. They did you know, work at the farm or the ranch. And so I want to know a little bit more about that 
is it a chapter in your book or just a small piece of it? If you can kind of elaborate on how the everyday person can maybe even just start slowly into working out. Yes. Yes. That yeah, was, uh, uh, it was a small piece that started in the beginning because my book is about the reader, not myself. Like, I'm so great. I did all this stuff and I accomplished. I don't want people to go and be like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Another guy telling me how great he is, whatever it is, or what to do. I want people to say, look, you're great. You picked up my book to read. I'm telling you, you're great. By you working on a farm. Back in the days, <clears throat> stay-at-home moms, people working farms or mechanics, construction workers, everything. That's natural strength you built up. Because if you take anyone from like their Goldman Sachs or finance and say, hey, you're going to dig a hole all day or lay down or clean up a house, things like that. They can't do it. They're exhausted because they're not conditioned to do so. So you develop natural strength by doing just that simple job that you do every day. And you don't realize you actually burn calories. Maybe you don't burn a thousand calories an hour, like on a crazy hit workouts, but if you burn two, 300 cal calories a day, that adds up in the math at the end of the week. You know, same thing going out and playing with your kids. You know, clients come to me, each one has their own specific goals and reasons why to work out. Some are like, I wanna eat whatever I want. Some are like, I have this great role coming up or I have to play professional sports. And it's a big thing to everyone that I wanna feel good. I want to feel like I accomplished something. Like after you run, don't you feel good? You're like, I did five miles today. I and mean, when you go meet your girls and you're sitting down having lunch, like, what did you do today? I started off running five miles. And all the girls go, I, yeah, okay. I think I'll have a salad for lunch. You yeah. But well, I, well I eat the nachos. Because <laughs> yeah. I went ran five miles. I, I believe in reward yourself. You work out hard all week. By all means, have that cookie, cheesecake, whatever, ice cream, nachos, but just don't have it every day. That's the only thing. Um, but I totally believe in that. Back in the days, early 50s, 40s, remember, everyone did some sort of physical labor. And I explained to everyone, the oldest profession in the world is farming, not prostitution. It's farming. <laughs> everyone made their food by either hunting or growing it. That was it. And it was work. If you ever farmed or been to a farm, they work. They get up at four in the morning and they have a whole list until noon of things to do. And it, that's every single day, you know, and hay, bales of hay. I remember picking them up. They're heavy. <laughs> yes, they are. And there's always They're something heavy. to do on a farm. It's not just even the tending to the animals or feeding them, but there's also like, holes to be dug for fence posts yeah. or uh, you know mechanical issues at something and you have to fix it there's a lot of strength involved in all of that lots, stuff. lots of strength mental and physical but that's also like with you if you have a house and you're cleaning up your house how many of us sweat when you're mopping your floors and sweeping up you're working mm -hmm. that's the whole thing you're, you're actually working you're like i said you're not burning a thousand calories but maybe two three hundred you're like woof i'm really working here and that was basically the premise of the book. I said, I want people, it's not about weightlifting. It's not about track and field or anything else. It's something specific. Overall, building your body to the best that you feel it can be. That's the key. Great. Well, I'm, well, I'm definitely excited to read it. Is there anything else that you want our readers to know? The Kind of the last question I have is, we had an article on the um, Dr. Way's in about how to make fitness kind of last habit. And so I think you touched on it in terms of housework, farm work, you know, whatever it is, washing your car can be part of your fitness routine. But do you have any tips in terms of how you can make it a lasting habit? So how many days of the week do you need to actually have a, you know, I'll, I'll put it in air quotes, like a workout versus Walking your car, doing housework. Like, how would you think about making it? Um, you know, a lot of my friends, I asked, I told them I was doing an interview with you, and they said, well, ask them, because I'll work out for four months, and then it will be a rainy day, and everything will just go away because I can't get outside, and then one day will buy in the two days, and then before you know it, you're, yeah, that's, you're that's, that's, in your routine. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually a very normal and great question. I tell everyone, Everyone falls into a rut, including myself. You get burnt out sometimes. That's why the versatility or changing workout helps you. And I tell a lot of people, when's the last time you swam? They're like, what? I'm like, really swam, like for 30 minutes. Because once you jump in a pool, you're wet. Or the ocean, you're wet. You have to swim. You just go. So I tell everyone also, remember when you were a kid? And that was a, a, 
I did a little bit in my book about that. Touching back to that inner child. When you were a kid, you went out and played. You didn't think, oh, it's just an hour I'm, and then I'm coming back home. You played all day, whether it was tag, basketball, whatever game it was. And you enjoyed it. You ran around. You had fun. And you, that's the whole thing about working out. It's got to be back to fun again. You got to make it fun. What's great about group classes, because you can go with your friends and be competitive against each other and push each other, which is nice. You have to just stay consistent. That's all it is with everyone. It's like, okay, yeah, it's raining out. Okay, you know what? Instead of running outside, I'm going to take a spin class. Now I'm inside, you know? And it's super hot out. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to swim that day instead, you know? Or it's a little bit of a fall. It's a cold day. I'm going to take a boxing class or jump rope classes. A mid majority of gyms now give a lot of things away for free if you ask them. Hey, can I try some personal training sessions? Can I try maybe it's uh, – you know, a two week pass, try your gym out, see how it is. Don't be afraid to ask that. And again, that helps you make a decision what works for you, what doesn't. Not feeling bad about it when you get out of your routine. So if you've been doing spin for four months, it's not the end of the world to switch it that one day. Right. Correct, I right. mean, you do, okay. Cause I think a lot of people see working out as the routine of going to spin every single day and they, they, they feel accomplished by it. But you also shouldn't be a lot if you don't get to because there's plenty of things that you could be doing. Yes, yes. There's also a thing of overtraining where I've had models that come to me. I got Victoria's Secret show coming up, this and that, and they'll do like five, six hours in a day of training. And when you overtrain, you're actually counteracting the effects of you training and trying to weight loss. Um, you actually will get sick. Your body will break down. You, you develop quite a few different ailments. But so I tell everyone, uh, the question you asked before is how many times should I be working out a week? At least three. Go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Start off with that. Remember, professional athletes work out six times a week, six hours a day. And it's still, it's broken apart with them. There's strength training, there's cardiovascular training, there's skill set. So if you're a golfer, you're playing golf. If you're a pitcher, you're, you know, throwing baseball, whatever it is, drivers, everything. It's a skill set that they have to do. So they work on their fundamental skills as well as strength training and then cardiovascular muscle endurance. So it's broken apart for them. And then they get one day off to kind of relax, allow the body to rest, and everyone sees the ice baths and all the ultrasound or things like that. Or I love the other one, the high-altitude chambers they put them in. <laughs> I'm like, okay. You know, it's amazing how science has really progressed when it comes to athletics. And, again, you got to figure out what works for you. I don't really recommend too much staying in, in an ice a bath of ice for like an hour. <laughs> you will come out blue. <laughs> uh, but – I do emphasize a lot of people, stretch, simple stretching. And, you know, that's in my book as well. You know, just simple, basic exercises to start off with and then slowly work your way up. That's all. Remember, you got to crawl before you can walk and then run afterwards. Well, great. Well, I'm looking forward to reading your book. Where do you buy your book? Um, and then how do people stay in touch with you? It's very easy to stay in touch with me. Um, it's funny because... My cell numbers on Instagram and my Facebook and everything else like that. So you call me, you get me. You don't get a secretary or an assistant, and I treat everyone the same. You can also simply email me at odstudio32.gmail.com. Oh my God. Or you can go to my website, www.o-dstudiogroup.com. Amazon has my book in ebook form or in soft cover. I like the soft cover because I always like carrying a book with me when I travel on to read. Um, and I tell everyone, you know, it's about you, the reader. That's what I did the show Sweat About, which is on the YouTube channel, Sweat the Show. And it's about different workouts. I want you as if you the, came off the street and said, like, I heard about this workout. Let me try it. Let me see what it's about without having someone promoting it. I'm not promoting the workout. I'm just showing you what it really is about. You know, the who, what, where, and why. And that's something for the audience. People need to do more research into certain things. Like I said, certain things aren't good for you, you know, but make sure you enjoy something. And that's the key thing about working out. You enjoy it. Like for me, swimming relaxes me like there's no tomorrow. allows me to clear my head completely. Same with running. You know, and like I'm sure with you, when you have your music going and everything like that, and you're going down, you're like, okay, you have that euphoric high when you're done. You're like, oof, okay, I feel good today. You yeah, know, it's like going through a therapy session. You just go exactly. running. <laughs> exactly. But that's something like I tell everyone, try and start, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is a schedule. If you can, just do a Monday, Wednesday. Slowly, you're going to start picking up extra days for yourself. And 
involve your friends. Hey, let's go out and play tennis. Last time, you, when's the last time you asked a group of your friends, hey, let's go play racquetball, tennis, golf, something? And how many of them were like, uh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to go play basketball. No. <laughs> and that's the thing, like, we miss as our as kids. You, Everyone was in. Let's go play kickball. Let's go play dodgeball. Let's go. You know, we went out as kids to play. We don't do that anymore. And that was the key of keeping us active. Same like you work on a farm or you work in an office, no difference. Stay active as in doing something. Yeah, I love that mindset. Designed a book in the back where it's all workouts and diets that you can just do yourself. So I named one workout, it's called the Tom Brady. So it gives people an idea what he did with me and what we work on. And it doesn't involve any weights at all. Uh, love it, so, okay, good. But that, that's all thing like, you know, for a lot of people, unfortunately, my book is on back order. I ordered it, so I had to order all the copies. I was like, okay, great. <laughs> so it'll be about two weeks before I get it, as they told me, especially since the virus shut everything down, deliveries, you know. I'm like, okay, so mm -hmm. working on that. But hopefully you enjoy it. Yes, well, this will be a little teaser, and everybody will just be vying to get your back ordered book. Well, thank you so Pleasure, much. Pleasure, Anna. And no, I will talk you. to you soon. You got it. Bye-bye.